In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to prepare an input file for a recharge and fractional crystallization run using the magma chamber simulator. So the first thing we need to do is open up our input file. In order to get to that, we need to navigate to our finder window. Once there, get in our documents folder, open up the MCS folder structure, and open up the input and output folder. Again, if you're making your own input file from scratch, you can use this generalized prototype MES file we've provided. But for right now, we're going to open up our pre-populated file, and that's MES underscore RFC underscore one. My apologies. <clears throat> and the first part of the MES file we need to complete is this blue box. Uh, remember from last time, we set our global system variables here. Uh, so we're not assimilating any wall rock in this run. So we can go ahead and set our FM0 to 1. We're also not excluding any phases, so we can leave that blank. And we want to run this model at about 2 kilobar pressure. So we'll enter 2,000 bars in that cell. Let's leave enthalpy convergence steps alone. Remember, the sweet spot for this variable is 30. So leave 30 in this box unless you find yourself with an unreasonably good reason to. For our final global system variable, oxygen fugacity, we don't want to run along a buffer during this simulation. So we need to type in none. Remember, exactly as given in column F into this cell. For our magma subsystem, we've pre-populated this file, MES file with a basaltic composition, and it, we've renormalized it to 100 weight percent. So we can set our magma subsystem starting temperature at 1300 degrees. Remember, this is just a jumping off point for melts to find the liquidus temperature for the magma composition. So it doesn't really need to be particularly above or below the liquidus temperature, just somewhere in the general vicinity of that number. We're also going to lower our delta T from the FC only tutorial. And so now each equilibration step will occur every time the magma subsystem has cooled five degrees. I wouldn't really advise going any lower than that. The lowest I've been able to run without an issue is a delta T of two degrees, but the MCS was really sluggish and unhappy due to the intensive nature of the calculations required. Finally, we have our two different options for stopping the MCS runs prematurely, either a hard stop temperature or at a certain percentage of liquid left in the magma subsystem. We're going to go ahead and employ the hard stop temperature function and let's set it to 950 degrees. For our wall rock composition, we have a really nice Sierra Nevada granite. And again, it's had some water and some CO2 added to it and it's been renormalized to 100 weight percent as well. As a reminder, because there is CO2 in all three of these compositions, I'm going to want to run this model in either RMELT 1.1.0 or 1.2.0 because those are the ones that can model CO2 uh, if you put them in the input file. We don't need to do anything else with the wall rock parameters for now as we're not assimilating anything in this run. So let's continue on down the MES file. So the first thing you need to consider when you're running a magma mixing model, uh, the recharge function of the magma chamber simulator is a mixing and hybridization step. So please forgive me if I use mixing and recharge interchangeably. Uh, but that's how you want the recharge to be triggered during your simulation. Uh, we can use this recharge trigger mode option to tell the MCS whether we want our recharge events to be triggered by choosing a specific temperature for the magma subsystem uh, by either using the by temp or by temp serial functions at which the mixing event will occur or by specifying that you want the recharge to occur after the magma subsystem has undergone some degree of cooling. And this is the by delta function. This is a one or the other sort of situation. So you can either have all of your recharge events triggered by temp or by delta, but not both. So whatever you set, stick with it. We're going to go through all three types of recharge triggering in this tutorial. So let's start with the by temp method of triggering a recharge event first. In order to enable this function, we need to make sure that cell B63 says by temp. And remember, capitalization counts. So we can scroll on down to our first recharge composition. Now, I've just put in another general basaltic. I think this might be a 
Hawaiian composition, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's not too hydrous. Throwing in a little bit of carbon dioxide for good luck. And the temperatures and masses for each recharge event are given below each recharge event's composition. Uh, let's scroll down and we can take a look. So here at recharge event number two, we have our composition first, and then below it we have our mass and temperature parameters. Uh, the other three recharge event variables are organized in the same manner. Okay, we can scroll back up to recharge event number one and set its parameters. So here we go. The first parameter we want to set is the recharge one mass. Like the Walrock subsystem, the recharge subsystem can be any mass. We're not restricted to 100 grams as we are in the magma subsystem. So let's put in 20 grams. The next parameter, recharge one temperature, is the temperature the recharge magma actually is at when the recharge event is triggered. So for this model, we want the temperature of the recharge magma to be 1,150 degrees, which we'll enter here. The third parameter, recharge one trigger temperature, refers to the temperature of the magma subsystem at the time of recharge, or when, but in temperature because the MCS really doesn't have a temporal component, you want the recharge event to occur. We want the first recharge event to occur when the magma subsystem has cooled to a temperature of 1,000 degrees. So let's enter that in cell B89. The last parameter is the recharge one delta trigger temperature. And unless you're using the bi delta recharge triggering mechanism, you're going to want to leave this blank. We're going to come back to the bi delta recharge shortly. Now for this particular model, I need two different recharge events to be triggered. So we're going to fill out information for the second recharge event as well. I've used the same recharge composition as before, but this time we want to mix in 25 grams of our basalt when it's 1,125 degrees and our magma subsystem is 1,150. So let's enter 25 grams in for the recharge mass, uh, 1,125 in for the temperature of the recharge magma, and 1150 for the temperature that the recharge will occur at. And again, we're gonna make sure to leave that last cell blank. We can also scroll down through the rest of the recharge events, just in case to make sure that the masses are set at zero and there's no trigger temperatures set. I just like to be safe. And that's it. So we've completed the MES file for an RFC run where recharge is triggered by setting a particular temperature. We can save our MES file, but I want to keep it open because we're actually going to do the same model, but employing the by temp serial function. So let's save this file as MES underscore RFC underscore two. Uh, I already have it here, but I'll go through the motions. and that gets saved again in the input and output folder structure. So after we've saved the file, we can go back down to row 63, and we want to change our recharge trigger model from by temp to by temp serial. Again, spelling and capitalization counts, and then save the file again. So here's the difference. Take a look at the trigger temperatures we've set for recharge events one and two a little bit closer. And you should see that the recharge temperature for recharge event one, I'm sorry, the trigger temperature for recharge event one is actually lower than that of recharge event two. This is where the by temp and by temp serial distinction arises. So if recharge is triggered by temp serial, the recharge events will proceed in the order they come. So recharge one comes before recharge two, which comes before recharge three, etc., etc. But if recharge is triggered by temp, as we did here, or I'm sorry, as we did in the first one, uh, the recharge events will be triggered in decreasing order of their set trigger temperature. 
So in the case of MES RFC 1, recharge event 2 should have been triggered before recharge event 1. And we can see if this really is the case by comparing the output files for both of these runs. All right, now I've gone ahead and done these runs ahead of time, but once they're side by side, we don't even really need to zoom in here for you to immediately notice the difference. So let's zoom in to the RFC by temp one. So we can actually see what's going on. Uh, recharge two was set to occur when the temperature of the magma subsystem was 1,150. And as soon as it dipped below that, our recharge vent was triggered. We can tell it occurred because the melts run mode over here in column B has changed from magma equilibrate B to recharge equilibrate. And the two rows which calculate the recharge event are highlighted in orange. The first of these orange rows gives us the state of the, of the recharge at the time of recharge, you know, pre-hybridization, immediately before the magma is mixed together, what is the state of the recharge system? And that's the information that's recorded in this line. The second row, magma equilibrate C, gives us the new equilibrated state of the now hybridized system. Uh, and remember, just as with the AFC, there's no fractionation going on yet. So over here, we would have new minerals in our magma. And we have a new magma liquid composition that's a little bit more mafic than before, which is what we would expect by adding a little bit of the salt in. And after the orange step happens, we go back to fractional crystallization. We can see that because we're back to magma equilibrate B. Further on down, we can see that recharge one was triggered when the magma cooled to just below 1,000 degrees. So it was triggered when the magma reached 999.74 degrees. So when you do RFC by temp, it really doesn't matter at all what order you put your recharge events in. Uh, they will be triggered according to temperature. On the other hand, using the by temp serial function will cause recharge one to occur first, regardless of the conditions you've set for the remaining recharge events. So see how we have no recharge occurring until the magma subsystem cools to 1000 degrees? I'll zoom in because obviously nobody can see that. So our, once our magma subsystem cools to 1,000 degrees, the first recharge event is triggered. And because recharge 2 has a trigger temperature that's actually higher than the temperature of the new hybridized magma, which right here is 1,073 degrees, which is less than the 1,150 we set it to trigger recharge number 2 for. So it's going to get triggered immediately after recharge 1. The moral of the story is if you're running an RFC or an RAFC model and you're using the by temp serial trigger function, the recharge events will always occur in the order they appear on the MES input file. For the final trigger method by Delta, we're going to do an RAFC run, so recharge, assimilation, and fractional crystallization all in one fell swoop. And we're going to trigger the recharge events to occur after, you know, some degree of cooling. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Let's open up our pre-populated file. MES underscore RAFC underscore three. And next, let's scroll down again to row 63. And we want to make sure that this says by Delta. Uh, down here at the bottom of recharge event number one, we can see that we need to put in some number here. And whatever number we put in, after the magma subsystem has cooled that number of degrees, a recharge event is going to be triggered. Now, each recharge event can have its own delta, B to, delta T to be triggered at, and like in the by temp serial trigger method, recharge one will occur before recharge two, which will occur before recharge three, and so on and so forth. So let's put 100 here in cell B90. 
and we want to make sure and delete the trigger temperature we've set before. It's already gone, but it's not necessary to have that blank, but it does keep things cleaner. So essentially what will happen here is that the magma subsystem will cool 100 degrees from its liquidus, at which time recharge one will be triggered. We can scroll down. And let's do the same thing for recharge event number two, but we're going to have it triggered after another, say, 50 degrees of crystallization. So if you'd like to run this model yourself, go ahead and save this file to your input and output folder. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and open up the output file for this run. And we can see what the data generated by using the by delta function looks like. So we can see that just as before, the RFC calculations are in the orange rows and the AFC calculations are in the cyan rows. Let me zoom in. Okay. The temperature of the magma subsystem is given in column D. And we can see that recharge one is indeed triggered after the magma has cooled 100 degrees. After the first recharge event, we have our new hybrid magma state, and we can see that the magma temperature has gone up uh, just a smidge, but that's expected considering the high temperature of the magma and the small mass of our recharge event. Uh, recharge two is then triggered after the new hybridized magma composition has cooled yet another 50 degrees. The higher mass and temperature of recharge two is going to be enough to trigger the AFC, and as you can see by scrolling, we're going to have assimilation occurring for the remainder of the run.